All right, y'all, welcome back. And in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to create custom images in Docker. Now, I just wanna preface this by saying that there are actually a couple different techniques we can use to create images in Docker. This one is the more manual process. It's not the one that you're typically gonna be using, but the reason I wanna teach this first is to give you guys a nitty gritty detailed breakdown of exactly what's going on. It's just gonna make the future concepts easier to understand. Now this technique specifically is gonna involve taking an existing image, applying some changes on top of that, and in this case, it's just gonna be installing some new software. We're gonna be installing Redis. And then once we have all the changes made, we're more or less gonna take a snapshot of those changes and say, this is our new image. So the first thing that we're gonna need is a base image. And for this, we can just use Alpine, which is a very stripped down basic version of Linux. And we also wanna run it in interactive mode so we can provide input, so dash IT. Another thing I wanna do is I wanna give this container a name. So Bucky's container, let's just call it something really easy. And again, this is just so later on we can refer to the container without using those, you know, random strings, those hash values. So, all right, we wanna run a container and we want it to be called Bucky's container. And what do we wanna use? We can just use Alpine. Let me minimize my screen here. So we're gonna use Alpine, the latest version, and then we're just gonna say is a default command, just give us shell. So all right, it's not finding it locally, so it just downloaded this from Docker Hub. And all right, so with this base Alpine image, we now have a container running on our system that we can make some changes to. So what do we wanna do? Like I said, the only package or software that we're gonna be installing is Redis, just to get something real simple up there. So APK, this is the built-in package manager that came with Alpine. And what we want to do to install Redis is just say add, update, make sure we're getting all the latest version, Redis, right there. All right, so nice and quick, what it did is basically installed Redis on our Alpine base image. So now what we're looking at is a container with Redis installed, pretty simple. So what I want to do now is actually exit out of here and we can review our containers by going docker container LSA. All right, now let me expand this in. Okay, so what we are looking at here is our one container. It's called Bucky's container and it has Redis installed on it. So now what we would like to do is basically use this container and take a snapshot of it and create an image from that. So what we'll end up with is a brand new image with Redis installed on it. So to do that, again, it's Docker container commit. Now this commit keyword is the one that actually creates the new image from this Bucky's container container. Now, another thing that I wanna point out is if you read the definition of this command online or in Docker's documentation, they technically don't say create a new image from a container. What they say is we're gonna be creating a new image from a container's changes. So technically what this is doing is it's not just creating something brand new. It's taking that base image and applying those changes to it. And in our case, that just involves installing Redis and it creates a new image from that. Again, this isn't really important for where we are now in our learning and our knowledge. It's essentially how Docker makes the image creation process more efficient among other things. But again, we just wanna look at the different methods of creating containers right now. So, you know, just some nice little background info for you. So anyways, back to the meat and potatoes of this. Whenever you run Docker container commit, the first argument we're gonna pass in is what is the container that you wanna use as a source? And well, we only have one container that we have Redis installed on, so <laughs> not too many options there. The next one is, what do you want your new image to be named? And I'm just gonna name mine creatively, Bucky's image. So all we're doing is we're saying, hey Docker, can you create a new image called Bucky's image from Bucky's container? And once we hit enter, it says yes, and it gives us back the ID. 
So now we can actually verify that we have the image created by doing Docker image LS. And look at that, uh, 3781E, 3781E, new image called Bucky's image, looking good. Now, if we want to use this image to create and run a new container, then we already know how to do that. Just clear some of this out. So I'm going to do Docker container run Bucky's image. Now, remember, this image is a blueprint for, you know, basically a stripped down version of Linux with Redis installed on it. But the Redis server isn't actually running on it. The software is installed, but no process is running. So the default command for this or the startup command, if I could type, is Redis server. So now when I hit enter, it's going to take Bucky's image, start up a container from it, and then run the Redis server. And there you go. So just to verify that this is indeed working as expected, if you pop over to a new tab, we can just test it out by running the Redis CLI on this container or in this container. Hmm. Interesting. How would you say that? Any hoots. So first, let's just check out our containers using Docker container LSA. And what do we got? All right. So we have this first one that was created from the Alpine image. And remember, we did that at the very beginning of this video. And then we had this new container that was created from Bucky's image. And this is running the Redis server. So this is the one we're just going to tap into real quick and make sure everything's working correctly. So what we can do, and let me see the name of that one. All right, probably should have gave our new one a custom name, but apparently Docker decided to name it Laughing Matsumoto. I don't know what that means. Probably whoever does know how to pronounce that is laughing at me right now. But any hoot, moving on. So Docker container, and we just want to run a command in that. And of course, we're going to need our interactive prompt and the container name laughing Matsumoto. It's actually a pretty cool name. And what is our default command we want to run here? Well, let's just run Redis CLI. All right. So it looks like we are now running Redis CLI in this container. And what command can I run? Just help. All right. So run the help command, make sure everything is working correctly. And there you go. So again, that is one technique that you can use to create custom images. Again, it's not the technique that you're going to be typically using. This is more of a manual technique, but lucky for us in the next tutorial, we're going to be looking at an easier way to create images using Docker. And that is through a Docker file. It's going to be awesome. Make our life a whole lot easier. But for now, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.